Hey, Vetfolio voice listeners, so glad you're here. For this episode sponsored by DECRA, I was joined by Dr. Kim Gallagher to discuss a super exciting treatment, one of the first updates to canine lymphoma treatment we've seen in general practice in over 20 years, Laverdia CA1 or Verdinexer tablets. Laverdia CA1 is a conditionally approved first of its kind oral tablet that uses sign technology to treat dogs with lymphoma. If you wanna learn more about how Laverdia works and the pharmacokinetics behind it, check out my podcast with Dr. Craig Clifford where we dive into that topic in more detail. My guest for this episode, Dr. Kim Gallagher, has firsthand experience with Laverdia CA1 after using it in her own dog diagnosed with lymphoma, and she brings that experience and expertise to our talk today to discuss its use in general practice. Dr. Kimberly Gallagher graduated from Cook College, Rutgers University with a Bachelor's of Science in Animal Science and a minor in Equine Science. Dr. Gallagher earned her veterinary medical doctorate from the University of Pennsylvania School of Veterinary Medicine. Her career has run the gamut in small animal medicine with a variety of positions and roles, including ones in ambulatory medicine, ER, and private practice, all in the greater Philadelphia area. Dr. Gallagher is a highly motivated, seasoned, small animal general practitioner who served as a medical director and business owner with a demonstrated record of accomplishment in skilled patient evaluation, diagnostics, and treatment planning. She's now an independent contractor working as a relief veterinarian. She practices low stress handling techniques and provides comprehensive and compassionate care to her patients. The Gallagher family resides on their family farm in Malvern, Pennsylvania, where Dr. Gallagher enjoys cooking, gardening, and beekeeping. Well, I am joined for this episode by Dr. Kim Gallagher, and we're going to talk about something that is near and dear to your heart, Dr. Gallagher, something kind of personal, and that's the management of our patients who are dealing with cancer, and more specifically, hematopoietic cancers. So let's start off by talking about our patients with lymphoma and, you know, kind of, as we mentioned, you've got some personal experience with this, with your own dog. How do we normally see lymphoma present? Yeah. So thanks, Dr. Cassie. It's always helpful to set up a bit of a foundation about this form of cancer lymphoma. If you guys didn't know already, lymphoma is the most common hematopoietic cancer in dogs. And lymphoma is generally the most expensive form of cancer to treat and produces the most insurance claims. On average, 2,000 dogs are diagnosed each day. 80% of those dogs will decline in-house or referral for the gold standard therapy of CHOP. Multicentric is the most common form in dogs. This is different than in cats. And today we're going to focus on lymphoma in dogs. 80% of those cases are generally healthy and asymptomatic, aside from their peripheral lymphadenopathy. A family member just found a lump. 20 to 40% of them will present with anorexia, fever, vomiting, diarrhea, weight loss, and melana, but they're a smaller percentage. Absolutely. And, you know, it's always sad when we see these guys who are sick because it changes that conversation. But so many of them, like you said, they, they do present looking otherwise okay, looking otherwise healthy. And, and as you mentioned, kind of a family member found a lump. And well, I would imagine that talking owners through that diagnosis is probably something that you have become exceptionally good at with your personal experience. Can you kind of share with us your thoughts on what the important messages are to convey when we're talking about a cancer diagnosis and, and specifically lymphoma with pet owners? and how we deliver those messages in a compassionate way. Yeah, for sure. I think that's key. Sadly, we become better practitioners when we ourselves have stood in our owner's shoes. Having had two pets, both of which have died of terminal cancer, it's important to remember what it feels like to be in the thick of it along with them. Let's remember to focus on the client's perception of that experience and that diagnosis. I know firsthand how busy life is, practice, and our personal stuff can be to each of us each day. It can be very overwhelming. We are all humans. Please try to remember to be present with your clients. Listen to them. Let the client's needs lead us. 
your client called because they felt a lump on their loved one or their loved one is not feeling well and you, the veterinarian, is now suspicious of lymphoma. Sadly, lymphoma or just a suspicion of any type of cancer comes with a hefty stigma. I'm sure many of you discuss this on a daily basis. The gift of chemotherapy is not financially available to everybody. And the fear of pain and suffering seen by our human counterparts undergoing chemotherapy alone sometimes draws the line. In human oncology, a cure may be achieved with dose-dependent therapy. Along with this may come a marathon of treatments with many horrifying side effects. Our goal is that our patients don't perceive or feel like they have cancer. They are learning to live fully with their cancer. And just like our patients, we want our clients to sleep at night without regrets because we've all done our best. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, getting any pet through cancer, specifically a hematopoietic cancer like lymphoma, it's going to require a good bit of collaboration between the family and the pet healthcare team. How do you relay the importance of this type of teamwork to the family? And what kind of understanding do you feel like it's important to create between the family and the veterinary team? Yeah, totally. The conversation must be collaborative. We have to remember as veterinarians, our goal should always be patient-centered medicine. What is the family's goal? Make sure you ask that very simple but often difficult question. The focus is on transparency, remembering always that time is of the essence. The family and the team must understand this concept. We are talking only weeks if intervention is not initiated quickly. In general practice, we must always have multiple plans that we feel proficient in using to tailor care to each of our patient's needs. We need to feel comfortable practicing medicine, not as an island, but as a big community or team of veterinarians, even if we are all not in one location. We need to ensure the family that we are here to support our patients. We need to let them know that we are listening to them, our clients, for feedback. We want to know the family's perception of their pet's current position in life in relation to their goals, expectations, and or concerns for their loved one who is now living with cancer. Are they clinically normal? Yes. And I I love that you talk about us all working together, even if we're not in the same location, because isn't that an amazing blessing of the technological age of we really have the opportunity for some amazing collaboration And let's dive into one of the options we have to facilitate this collaboration. Um, And that's a a newer drug, Lavertia CA1 or Vertinex or tablets. It's a newer drug that's on the market to help with the management of canine lymphoma. So can you talk to us a little bit about what Lavertia CA1 is and how it works? Yeah. So this is the first oral cancer treatment of its kind. Lavertia CA1, Vertinex or tablets. The CA1 means that it's conditionally approved. An understanding of what conditional approval means is crucial. Conditional approval means that the necessary safety data when used according to the label has been demonstrated, that a reasonable expectation of effectiveness has been provided to the FDA, and that the drug is manufactured in accordance with full approval standards. Reasonable expectation of effectiveness means The product is reasonably expected to provide the intended effect when used under conditions of use described in labeling. A pivotal field efficacy study is being conducted to reach full approval within the five-year window allowed. Conditionally approved drugs must be used on label. This drug uses sign technology, and it provides a targeted approach to killing cancer cells at its nuclear core. It is effective in all forms of lymphoma for dogs. Mild to moderate side effects are noted, and we'll discuss those a little later on. It comes in convenient colored tablets, three sizes, three different colored tablets for ease of administration and dosing. It is given twice weekly, 72 hours apart between doses. It is affordable, and it can be stored on your shelf in your pharmacy next to your other drugs. 
that's really exciting. So hopefully, you know, if the team treating a pet for lymphoma also includes a veterinary oncologist, can you elaborate on why having a veterinary oncologist involved when developing an SOP for managing lymphoma is beneficial? Yeah, definitely. Let's start by saying, remember that time is of the essence. These cases are only going to survive weeks without intervention. Team education and preparation is key. And in my practice, I find it helpful to have reference standard operating procedures available for all of my team members. They allow everyone on the team to have an understanding of our medical plans and are left open to continually evolve with the practice of medicine and the patient's needs. I created an SOP on lymphoma care with my referral oncologist, Craig Clifford. If it's helpful for you to have a copy of this SOP, send me an email and I'll be happy to send it your way. Our goal is to provide consistent, comprehensive care for our patients, regardless of their plan. With collaboration, I can focus on family medicine and my local referral oncology teams can focus on their advanced services. We are able to keep communication and patient experience consistent. Once there is a suspicion, we submit a detailed medical history and exam notes along with the diagnostics completed. We've worked up our case. We reached out to oncology. They are looped in and now we're waiting on an appointment date. Now, what do we do? We initiate palliative care with GI protectants, appetite stimulants, pain medications while we're awaiting feedback as needed for that patient. Please remember to hold off on initiating prednisone in your patient without consulting first with your oncologist. This can severely alter the prognosis of CHOP therapy if the patient chooses to treat this way. So what are the questions we're looking for? How soon can the patient get in for care with oncology? Is the patient ill or are they stable? Is this a new diagnosis or a relapse? And is the family interested oncology referral at all? There is no time like the present to take a moment to reach out to your local boarded veterinary oncologist. Establish a rapport on how you can best work up these cases moving forward. This way, when they walk in the door, you're prepared and familiar with the workup. Ask them, have you ever worked with Laverdia CA1? Check in on their comfort with this new oral cancer treatment. While the family and oncology teams are getting their ducks in a row, Selecting Laverdia CA1, unlike prednisone, will not negatively impact the outcome of your patient's care. What a great answer. You know, so important to be able to communicate these things along the way, because like you mentioned, it can be a little while before we can get them into an oncologist sometimes. So being able to facilitate that really helps. And I have to say your pronunciation of palliative care just warmed my Midwestern heart there, like the palliative care. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I loved it. I was like, oh, I just feel right at home here. <laughs> uh, anyhow, back to the matter at hand. Let's let's do what we're here to do. So when we're incorporating Laverdia CA1, how does that fit in for our patients who are being treated or who plan to undergo chemotherapy protocols like CHOP in consultation with their oncologist? Like you mentioned, it won't negatively impact that treatment like prednisone could. Correct. Let's start by talking a little bit about like prognosis and the facts for lymphoma, because I think that helps us really understand. So what we said a couple of times, time is of the essence. Without treatment, these patients are looking at two to four weeks of prognosis. With prednisone, about 50% of them will respond and might live one to two months, but it's cheap. And well, it's what we've had for the last 20 years as well. With CHOP, either in your practice or in conjunction with an oncologist, remission rates are about 60 to 90%. And the duration of that remission is around six to 11 months, averaging eight to nine. The mean survival time is about eight to 12 months. And you're looking about five to $8,000, depending on your oncology team. The statistics show that 80% of our families will decline the gold standard of multi-adjuvant chemotherapy either at your practice or with an oncologist by referral. Lymphoma care hasn't changed in private practice in over 20 years. Prednisone alone at high doses can be offensive to some and contraindicated with those with comorbidities. So I'm so excited today to be chatting with you a little bit about Laverdia CA1, and it'll cost about a couple hundred dollars a month. 
Wow. That's a big difference. And so that kind of begs the next question of, of course, we, we hope that many of our patients will refer and undergo chemotherapy because there is generally a pretty good treatment plan available. But what about those patients who don't want to refer? What, what kind of role does Lavertia CA1 play for those patients? Yeah, it's a big role. In private practice, Lavertia CA1 is for the patient who declines CHOP. Again, either at your practice or by referral. Like we said, 80% of our patients diagnosed will fall into this category. And thus, this allows us to expand access to medical treatments for lymphoma. 80%, that's huge. It's for the patient who is awaiting referral, but it's a few weeks out and oncology is on board with this plan and it acts like a bridge between general practice and referral without altering the effectiveness of CHOP therapy like PRED does. It could be for the patient who's discontinued CHOP due to untoward side effects, cost, lack of response, lack of ability to get to the referral hospital. There are many reasons why this can happen in life or for the patient who's had a relapse and they're not pursuing Tenovia. The treatment goals in private practice are kind of different. This is a concept of stable disease. This is very different than the plan of action during CHOP. Our clients are so conditioned and fearful of the changes and fluctuations to the sizes of their pet's lymph nodes. Remember, this is what happened when they first called. They found a lump and we told them it meant that their pet had now a terminal illness. They know to call if they see any changes, almost like they're always waiting for that other shoe to drop. But with Lavertia CA1, lymph node changes don't seem to predict the patient's comfort and the client's perception of their patient's well being. It's most important that they don't know that they have cancer. We're not any longer just treating the lymph node size. If they're doing well, We want to keep going, even if the lymph nodes might be a little bit bigger or they seem to be fluctuating. We need to support the patient. Listen to the client's feedback. What is the family's perception and how are they doing clinically? Are they acting normal to them? Let's take a little bit of time to just talk about the benefits of Laverde SCA1. Therapy is completed in the comfort of your patient's home. Unlike high dose prednisone, you will are not likely to see increased water consumption, urination, excessive appetite, leading to house soiling, panting, pacing, changes in behavior or loss of energy. Like I said, it comes in three convenient color-coded tablets so you can have precise and ease of administration. It's given twice a week, about at least 72 hours apart, and it has a rapid onset of action. It is advised that we examine these patients minimally two weeks after starting the treatment, one, to see if there's a weight fluctuation and to determine if there's any dose adjustments indicated. Labs and diagnostics are not required, but they are tailored to the physical exam findings and the history that the client offers you. So this is very different than what we may have previously thought was indicated with our referral oncology treatments. I love the emphasis on making sure that our patients don't know they have cancer. I think we've talked about that on the podcast in many different disease processes that, you know, it's so important that the patients feel good at home and we're maintaining quality of life in that regard. So it sounds like Lavertia CA1 is a really good option for that. Yeah. So any side effects we should be aware of with Lavertia CA1? As we discussed earlier, the side effects are generally mild to moderate, and they are anorexia, diarrhea, lethargy, weight loss, vomiting. Um, A few less common side effects were elevated liver enzymes, thrombocytopenia, anemia, lymphopenia, and neutrophilia. We found that low doses of prednisone when given along with the Lavertia CA1 often reduce the anorexia and GI side effects that may have been noted. Let's transition to safety. Out of an abundance of caution, we need to advise our patients and our staff to wear chemo-resistant gloves when packaging the drug into dram bottles. Pregnant nursing women, children, and breeding dogs, all of which have rapidly dividing cells, should not handle Lavertia CA1. Dispense chemotherapy-resistant gloves to be worn when administering and when cleaning up bodily waste into waste pickup bags. Thus, prevent direct contact with broken, moistened, or crushed pills. Do not do this. 
Prevent contact with urine, feces, vomitus, and saliva for three days after the last treatment. Do not store this drug near human foods or medications. Do not eat or drink or smoke while handling Laverdia CA1. Wash food and water bowls separately. And as a vet, I advise this routinely for good hygiene for at least three days after the last treatment. I think you hit some really important points there. You know, I'm picturing the person who crushes up the tablet and mixes it into wet food or, you know, brings it home and stores it on the kitchen counter so they don't forget to give it. That would be me. So yes, all really important safety points to hit. I think it's important to just know that when you're using this medication, we need to make sure that we are using appropriate precautions so that everyone in the family feels like they're safe and using it effectively. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Gallagher, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on and talking more about this really exciting option. You know, like you mentioned, our therapeutics in private practice for for lymphoma really haven't changed in 20 years. So to have another option to offer patients is really exciting. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me, Dr. Cassie. This has been a lot of fun. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining us for this episode. Thank you to Dr. Gallagher for her time and her expertise, and thank you to DECRA for making this episode possible. For more episodes like this, click on the Education tab on the Vetfolio website. As always, we'd love to hear your input on this talk, as well as ideas for topics you'd like to hear from us in the future. Feel free to reach out to me at dvm at vetfolio.com. You can also visit my Facebook page at Dr. Cassie DVM, and you can find me on LinkedIn. And remember, if one animal is better off because of you today, it's a great day.